It's been a very interesting week, Terry. Uh, very interesting. You tell. Well, just, you know, we do an awful lot of historical research. Oh, yeah. And the historical research leads you into things that you never, ever imagined. And now that that uh, we're kind of, <laughs> we, all, we all started out with this with me, uh, imagine this, perched on a stool, a stool without back, at a workbench with a computer on it. I mean, we're talking like a garage or, you know, that kind of an environment. This all started with me in the basement. Is this grunge school. research? <laughs> this was grunge research. <laughs> and, and it, it started out, you know, like that way back in the day when, when computers were still huge boxes that <laughs> took up an entire desk, you know. Right. <laughs> and uh, so we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> a real long way and uh you know now our researchers and i'm not i'm not saying one iota bad about all of us dinosaurs that that started out by using index cards in the dewey decimal system because if the dinosaurs hadn't been here plugging along a lot of the rest of it wouldn't be here either mm -hmm. I, I also want to thank all of the elders all over this country who for one reason or another got interested in some particular aspect of history or politics or current events at the time it was happening and who squirreled away vast amounts of actual documents and newspaper articles and uh, magazine articles and um, you know it's just priceless the stuff that we get sent uh, as part of our research from people who've been hiding it away in their closet <laughs> held back from aught six. Yeah. That, uh, you know, that gives us insight into things that we would never have otherwise. And that, you know, oftentimes points us down a road or, you know, lets us sort through all the various rabbit holes so that we don't waste our time on, you know, fluff or wrong suppositions. But um, so, you know, I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very grateful for all the research that, that went on before. But we're now entering a whole new kind of stage of research. And I, I guess you might call it cause analysis, mm. uh, computer assisted statistical um, locational uh, biographical uh, statistical analysis that just adds another whole dimension to what you can see or do with your own eyes um, by Im import importing and adding all of this information to databases you can see some amazing correlations to things that you would never just pick up randomly um, and you also wind up seeing different organizational relationships that you never would suspect right so um as we're doing this as, as we're getting our kind of our sea legs in the computer age of historical research and database coordination and all the inputting of data that um you know has to kind of go before you can get to this stage right uh, it, it's just absolutely fascinating. And um, it, it gives us insights that are expanding our perception of the problems that we're facing, mm -hmm. but also opening up pathways to new solutions. Sure, of course. So that's, that's all very exciting. Um, we've had some major breakthroughs in our understanding of the Civil War. Um, some of which I wrote about this past week. I just want to uh, give everybody a heads up that uh, because of the heavy censorship that has descended upon uh, such social media um, organizations as Facebook and Twitter, um, I have 
decided that I'm going to boycott them <laughs> and keep good all the really good juicy stuff for my own websites. <laughs> good for you. And so um, just to remind everyone that if you've been reading and getting your information about our organizations and things that we're doing and, and material we're uncovering from Facebook or Twitter or one of the other social media network sites, uh, you really need to make the extra effort and actually go to uh, the websites that are directly associated with me um, and pick up on the trail there. So um, go to my www.annavonwrites.com website if you want the very latest. And um, I'm sure you're, you're still picking up and distributing kind of through our network um, with the American States Assembly.net website. Yep. So, you know, we've, we've got several actually different websites that get direct feed because of our email lists and things like that. And uh, so if you've been depending on Facebook to keep up with me, <laughs> go, go make the extra little web search and, and come to the actual websites and, and start doing that because uh, it's apparent that these social media networks have become very politicized and that um, they are taking undue advantage of the public while benefiting from being public corporations. They're actually not supposed to be uh, considering themselves a private community once they sign up and start trading on the stock market. And in fact, I'm surprised that they haven't been taken to court over this because as public uh, corporations that are publicly traded, uh, they do have a public duty. And that public duty also includes um, giving up some portion of their private prerogatives and rights as companies. Yep. So once they, once they cross that threshold, their community becomes the public is what I'm trying to say. And it should and be. So when you get their smug little things, oh, this does not meet our community standards. Well, I'm sorry, they're not in a position to dictate community standards for the general public. No. And I'm sure that at some point this is going to come back and bite them on the rumps. It may even result in the dissolution of their corporation because if they're not going to serve the public, there's no reason that the public should indemnify them with bankruptcy protection and give them access to the public airwaves and license them uh, for all their technologies and all the rest of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, they also take all the data that they gather and turn around and sell it to the highest bidder for marketing. And so they are right. making money off of everybody. Yep. And so this is this is the sort of thing that, that uh, Facebook is going to have to be brought to account for. Um, I'm sure that you all saw that Google is facing a major, major lawsuit. Yay, finally. And, um, yeah, well, the only thing suspicious about that is that uh, Google happens to be owned by one group of, of the rats and all the other uh, organizations, Facebook, Amazon, blah, 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 is owned by another, another group of the rats. So actually what you're seeing is Google's being picked on because it's a competitor of these other thugs. Oh. But I think they all, we should be equal opportunity in all respects and we should go after the other thugs just as well as Google. But that's, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Why let them have a monopoly interest and continue to operate the way they have been? Zuckerberg? Exactly. Yeah, all of them. All of them. So I'm hoping that in the days to come, we will see action against Facebook, Twitter, and all the rest of them that have been. Um, basically violating the public law in favor right. of their own political leanings right. and opinions. Right. There are alternatives, I guess. Uh, Mike Adams has a Facebook alternative on his Brideon channel, and there are um, alternatives to YouTube on BitChute and um, other you know offerings and so th there's many different alternatives to youtube coming online 
but it would be well, good. Well, I'm if happy to see that. Yeah. I mean, uh, one way to break up a monopoly is to offer alternative services. Mm -hmm. So maybe, uh, maybe we can just affect that anti-monopoly legislation by making better choices about which sources we use. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think that everybody needs to be cognizant about how they participate in the ongoing criminality and fraud. Well, absolutely, because we do become um, kind of guilty by association. Right, right. I don't, I don't know if everybody has, has watched the, uh, the series Lonesome Dove, um, but uh, there was a, a fairly extensive television mini series some years ago called Lonesome Dove and it was a a western that uh, tracks the adventures of, of two old uh, federal marshals out in the west in the day and uh, in one of their uh, episodes one of their adventures a friend of theirs uh, was caught riding with horse thieves and murderers and even though their friend hadn't done anything wrong, had just kind of fallen in among bad companions, because he was riding with this group of um, horse thieves and murderers, he was hung. Mm. Guilt by association, huh? Well, a, a man back then knew that he had to separate himself off from people like that or be judged with the, by the company he was keeping. Because, you know, if, if you're with a bunch of outlaws, then you are an outlaw. Mm -hmm. No, they didn't, they didn't quibble. <laughs> they okay. just said, okay, well, you know that you're not supposed to be with murderers and, out, and horse thieves and outlaws. And if you're riding with them, you're riding for the brand. So, right. okay. Well, another example of that, it, you know, came up with Jennifer Goodwin this week because she was saying, you know, go get your, go buy a house from a sheriff's sale. And it's like, well, why would you do that? Because now you're participating in the gross fraud and criminality that is being- Wondering against your neighbors. Exactly. And same thing right. with closure sales, you know, it, it's all illegal activity. Well, we are taking a stab at that here in Alaska uh, just to let you know, uh, and uh, in other places too, uh, I, I want people to understand just how earth-shaking and momentous their efforts have been so far uh, with their one international action as a roll call vote of state assemblies to include the um, Western states and the states that have been formed since the uh, beginning of the Civil War, which I, I just point out that includes West Virginia. So it isn't all just Western states or what we think of as Western states, but all of those states that were sort of hanging uh, all this time as kind of quasi states or states in waiting are now finally states they're mm -hmm. enrolled officially. Yeah. So they're now all states of the union, officially. They not only raised their hand and said, hey, we want to be states of the union, but the, the other states of the union have welcomed them in. The, the states that were already states at the time of the Civil War have welcomed them in. And so now they're in full standing. All, all of their jurisdictions are functioning and that means that they are no longer considered quote unquote enclaves of the municipal united states fantastic it also means that any territorial role uh, custodianship thought to be left over from the um, northwest ordinance responsibilities are gone. They're severed now. And the BLM 
uh, interests and um, records for the United States land patents that are part of their record keeping now belong to the people of this country. Fantastic, that's amazing. So was the BLM holding things in trust anywhere? Basically the BLM was acting in a custodial and proprietary uh, capacity to uh, do the survey of the Western lands and to do certain functions in custodianship. Um, for example, uh, the grazing rights that um, were the object of the big fight with the Bundys. Right. Uh, they were acting as federal custodians, territorial and, and municipal custodians of state property, things that actually belong to the people of that state, like the Bundys, who had every right to use those grazing rights back to the founding of the state and before. Um, but they were being bossed around by their own employees and, and basically pillaged and taxed and plundered for the use of their own resources because the state of state organizations were assuming a territorial capacity with respect to the states that hadn't been formally enrolled as states of the union. Got it. So now that we finally took care of that piece of housekeeping, uh, it's having some world shattering changes and results because it changes the status of the states from states in waiting, kind of standing outside the door to being full force, actual factual states of the union with all their jurisdictions functioning. And um, that then reverses an awful lot of horse puggy. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. Yeah, I know here in Washington, we're super excited because now we have full statehood status. Right, absolutely. In fact, I had cause to look that up. You guys have, have uh, now been retroactively enrolled back to November 11th of 1889. Fantastic. So you uh, are finally catching up to yourselves in Washington <laughs> State. Uh, here in Alaska, it hasn't been such a long time since January 3rd of 1959, but uh, long enough. Mm -hmm. And um, the benefits of becoming a true, complete, uh, enrolled State of the Union can't be overstated. It's uh, the difference between being a uh, novice and being a nun, I guess you could put it that way. <laughs> on the one hand, you're fully committed, but on the other hand, you have all of the true rights, prerogatives, and, and stature as a state. And, and now the actual assets of the state truly do belong to the people of that state. And there's no uh, trusteeship or middleman or interfering, intervening authority, um, offering to put its fingers in your pie. And, uh, so that makes a, a huge difference for those of us who live in the Western states. And uh, it also is a sea change in terms of forms of law that are appropriate to be practiced within our borders and various practices such as taxations and the issuance of titles on land and I want people to think for a moment, what is a title and where have we heard that before and why are titles of nobility um, not allowed in our government? Mm -hmm. Well, because titles are part of a foreign government. Mm -hmm. Specifically, they're, they're part of the British government and other kinds of monarchies. And um, they are also, the word title uh, is a in itself a instrumentality of personhood. Mm -hmm. Correct, right. So when you have land that is held under title, it converts it into real estate and makes it a possession of the queen mm -hmm. 
at least in terms of being a um, being held in trust. Okay, yeah. So that then puts it under British law. And as we've already discussed, British law has been hideously polluted and um, converted and subverted and twisted and contorted since the 1750s mm -hmm. because the common law got merged with admiralty law to create equity law, which is just plain, it's avarice on wheels. Mm -hmm. So when they say, oh, this is a prime real estate holding, remember that the word real is a synonym for royal. Right. So if you're if you're looking at your your land as being real estate, then you are consciously or unconsciously buying into the idea that your land actually belongs to the queen and you're just some sort of freeholder surfer tenant on that land. See when they when they have a title company mm -hmm. and when they uh, have a, a title on the land, say a clerk's title, for example, all of that stuff is foreign. All of it is um, prohibited under our system. And the reason that it's used for British persons in America is that they can't actually own land here. Mm -hmm. Right. And so they did an unlawful conversion on us and our right. land property. Right. Land. They, they did an unlawful conversion and misrepresentation, mischaracterization of our political status in order to then make a false claim and conversion against our land and to issue, issue titles related to our land. And the way that we undo that is to um, publish and bring forward our United States land patents. Now the patent underlies everything else. So when you bring forward that patent, you bring it into the land jurisdiction, the international land jurisdiction where it belongs, and you do away with all of these subsidiary titles and land descriptions and just you know seize upon them in the same way that <laughs> they were trying to seize upon your patent and identity and convert your property into their property. Mm -hmm. So one of the interesting things that we did early on was that we brought forward patent on our own property. And by the way, there has never been an overturn of a United States land patent in the history of the federal courts. Oh, wow. Ever. That's pretty strong. <clears throat> so um, we brought forward the patent on our property in the Matanuska Susitnik County. And uh, when we did that, we issued sovereign letters patent. We basically uh, re-upped the United States land patent and took it a step further back and beyond to the level of an original patent that was not issued to or through any United States Republic or instrumentality under delegated power, but placed it back all the way to the very basic um, jurisdiction of the sovereign union. Mm, wow. So, um, and we did that for the whole United States. That's fantastic. So we, we basically put a floor under everything so that people could come back in and claim their, their land patent and ex, you know, exempt their private property from all of these false titles and land descriptions. As, as we've talked about before, we can find one little piece of land that has umpty ump different kinds of titles and descriptions attached to it. Right. 
And so uh, the land patent just cuts through all that and says, okay, this is it. <laughs> we don't care if you call it 3132 Morningside Lane. We don't care if you, you know, call it lot four, block seven of the Crumley Corner subdivision. We, you know, all that stuff just doesn't matter. That only applies to the functions of subcontractors who are providing particularized and specific services on a limited basis, by the way. Mm. Now, part of the problem that we have in this country, as you know, is that we've just had this runaway bunch of public employees. And, you know, they've been defining what services they were going to provide and uh, what they were going to charge for those services and what kind of bennies and perks and everything else for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, this is part of what we're talking about when we're talking about the foxes in, in charge of the hen house. Mm -hmm. We've got an absolutely crazy situation where our public employees have been left unattended and in our quote unquote purported absence from not having our, our actual lawful government in session, uh, they've just gone off and gone into business for themselves and left you to pay for it all. So with the, um, with the actual lawful government coming back into session and with the Western states um, being included now as states of the union, all of that changes. Very good. And uh, so we're, we're making progress on all of that too. I think it's um, incredible progress. Yes. And, and we're discovering that a lot of people in that system, in both the territorial and municipal systems, hate their bosses. <laughs> no, really, truly. Uh, we're being helped on all sides and in all ways by people who absolutely have seen how corrupt and how nasty it is and don't want to work in that environment and don't want to have these ugly, corrupt criminal people in charge of what they're doing and telling them what to do and, and slacking off and trying to foist blame on them. I've heard that's also true of the military. Yeah, well, we're fed up. And guess what? Our state assemblies are the actual government. Only government standing. Last well, time I looked. <laughs> well, yeah, it is the only government standing. And when these other entities that are subcontractors go bankrupt, there's a, it, it, by operation of law, every delegated power comes back to us. Right. As long as we're here present and accounted for and not absent. <laughs> And there's a, there's a really good little um, bit from American jurisprudence that makes this very, very clear uh, that this idea that you've been absent um, is null and nullifies it. Well, I should say it is nullified by your presence. Mm. Well, that makes sense. And no matter what kind of administrative process they've gone through or how much hoodoo voodoo they have sprinkled on the, the paperwork and how many stamps they've had, you know, affixed to it, it's null and void. So I'll, I'll get that little blurb out for everybody and, and you can, there's a lot of support backing all of that up, but. Fantastic. Basically. <laughs> Once you show up and claim your American heritage, your, your birthright political status and stand in it and you know, boot up your state assembly, you're the boss, you're the employer, they're the employees and they are messed up working outside their contracts, making false claims in commerce against their employer's credit, all sorts of other things that have to be addressed. But at least we have the mechanisms and the right and the lawful and legal authority to do that. Links to Anna's articles and resources can be found in the video description box. 
Thank you for subscribing, liking and sharing. If you enjoy having Anna's latest articles made into videos, please consider making a purchase from Ed's website sacredintuitiveelements.com. Thank you.